And we heard we heard the tower is go for catch. Please turn your cut off. The return flag is set for true. Ship engine start up. Stage separation. All right, hot staging confirmed. Six out of six lit on the ship. Booster boost back going. We heard that we are go for catch. Kate, Jesse, take out the views. Hopefully I got a booster coming home real soon. Wow, from our view here, Dan, uh, great views of planet Earth behind that super heavy booster. Right now it is performing the ship boost back burn. Phenomenal. Good news there telling us that the, uh, the pressures inside the ship are good. That is the second stage or the upper portion of the vehicle. Follow along with the telemetry on the bottom of your screen. Yeah, booster is currently, super heavy is currently in its boost back burn. This boost back burn. power telemetry nominal. This boost back burn lasts just a little bit over a minute. So we've got a little, uh, approximately 30 seconds left. We've had shutdown of that boost back burn. Up next will be hot stage jettison. The view from the camera on the left, or from the booster on the left hand side of your screen and then tracking cam there on the right-hand side of your screen. We'll see those grid fins. Booster offshore divert. And we can also see that the uh, hot stage has been jettisoned. Yes, visual confirmation of that there on your screen, which is great. Now the next... Starship is following a nominal trajectory. The next step for booster is going into that landing burn. Again, it'll light up 13 of those engines and then... Uh, pair down to three engines right before booster catch. All right, now just real quick, we did hear the call out, uh, boost back, or excuse me, booster offshore divert. Unfortunately, that means that we are no go for the catch. Um, as we said before, both the tower and the vehicle, as well as the operators on console have been actively evaluating the commit criteria for that return to the launch tower. Um, and unfortunately, we did not have a pass on those commit criteria. So we are no-go for tower catch. And we did mention that we're constantly evaluating the criteria for catch. There's a lot of things that need to go well in order to line that up. Unfortunately, today yeah. we will forego booster catch today. But what you're seeing on your screen is ship uh, currently making its way towards the Indian Ocean, still looking good so far. Exactly. So views there of the booster on the left-hand side of your screen, views of the ship on the right-hand side of your screen. Now, we said before that it was not guaranteed that we would be able to make a, uh, a tower catch today. So while we were hoping for it, like we said, it was pretty epic on attempt one, but uh, the safety of the teams and the public and, uh, and, and the pad itself are uh, paramount. So we are accepting no compromises in any of those areas. Exactly, and we're still going to get a lot of good flight data with booster even, but especially with ship. Again, we have an additional objective today to do an in-space relight of a Raptor engine, which again will help us set us up for uh, being able to do deorbit burns, which is- Ship chamber pressure phenomenal. Which, yeah. which is important for orbital flights. And what you're seeing on your screen is a view from Super Heavy as it's making its way back down to Earth. Yeah, once again, we are attempting an offshore landing of the Super Heavy booster. Uh, so we have seen this before, uh, and it is still very fun <laughs> to watch, watching it come down uh, for a soft splashdown uh, off the Gulf Coast of Texas. We can see it there re-entering. Uh, we saw earlier those grid fins. There are four hypersonic grid fins. Oh, we can see that the landing burn has begun on the Super Heavy booster. And same pattern, 13 engines will light. Gone down to three, just as we expected. And what an incredible view of splashdown that we got today. Oh, super heavy. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure the buoy cam views <laughs> will be pretty awesome once again. So we'd like to confirm a water landing once again for the super heavy booster. Congrats to the SpaceX team uh, for making that milestone as well. Now, ship continues to look good. You can see uh, that it is. Uh, 
continuing to react to all these amazing views that we're getting. The next milestone is... Starship uh, is in terminal guidance. Great news there. Uh, uh, Starship terminal guidance, referring to what we see here on our screen, the upper stage, uh, at uh, about 8 minutes 35 seconds or so, we have ship engine cutoff, which will be the cutoff of the, uh, the, the Raptor engines. We can see on our screen ship giving us some incredible views brought to us by Starlink. Uh, this view is also very interesting because we can see basically the receding tile line that we referred to earlier, where we mentioned we have removed a number of heat shield tiles in order to test out and push the envelope on the ship and demonstrate what its capabilities are. Ship engine cut off. Yeah, hey, Sydney, as you just saw a short while ago, that was an unsuccessful catch. People are starting to pack up and go. We do know that it is expected to land in the Gulf if it hasn't already. There are a whole lot of people that still have their phone, binoculars, and cameras all still pointed to the sky because what they witnessed here today is something that no matter if it was a successful launch, the way that the space race has transformed, according to astronomers and a whole lot of other people that we were talking about, is that this is fast forwarding to the future because of what Elon Musk has been able to do in a much shorter window of time rather than going through the government route. This is, again, a private company that is using most of their funds in the one word that matters most to Elon Musk, and that is reusability. That's essentially the entire business model for what SpaceX plans to do in the future. They plan to reuse the boosters, the engines, the rockets, and ultimately for that one goal is to send humans to Mars. Again, today's launch was an unsuccessful but a success in some ways and it'll definitely be part of the conversation as we start to learn more about what didn't go according to plan and what the crew with SpaceX will learn from today's launch. Now this one just came less than a month than last month's which was their fifth launch was what they are calling an astounding success in the space race in this new age space rather because what Elon Musk has been able to do with SpaceX here in the private sector in the United States is what so many other superpowers around the world are trying to do. We've seen it with Russia, China, South Korea, and even India. They are all trying to some way or another create reusable rockets so that way they can colonize or maybe offload cargo into space. Now, today's mission, which was this sixth test, was all about two different things. A lot of it was all about how the uh, fifth launch went in October. This one, they were trying to really get some more information and data on two things. One is how the heat shield works, and two, were they going to be able to restart that booster engine uh, in space so that way they could get the engine uh, into the Earth's orbit for an extended period of time. That was not going to happen today, but for the people that are here today, that doesn't matter because what does matter is the seventh launch, the eighth launch, ninth launch, and the tenth launch because they are here witnessing history. But in reality, they are more so witnessing the future because of what Elon Musk and what SpaceX has been able to do than what other superpowers cannot. Well, that is going to wrap us up out here at SpaceX for this sixth launch. We're going to have more coverage both for you on air and online at Valley Central. Com. Live from East LaBlanca Park, I'm Derek Garcia. Sydney, send it back to you in the studio. Derek, thank you. Well, like we just saw, the launch was still successful. Now, there was not a catch, but the launch itself was successful. You could hear the cheers from inside of SpaceX. The Starship location was a success. Right now, they're just going to wait for that test rocket to continue to see what's going to happen next. But we'll keep you up to date with the very latest. Thousands of people still very excited to have been able to see what they saw just minutes ago. At 4.07, we saw that splashdown, and it was a successful landing for SpaceX. This is something we're going to be following closely throughout the rest of our newscast. So you'll want to join us right back here at 5 o'clock. We'll have a recap along with video that you can rewatch up on our website, valleycentral.com. Thanks so much for joining us here on this special cut in here on CBS4. We'll see you right back at 5. Have a great afternoon. Buenas tardes, Sydney Hernandez.